I can see you far and wide across the ocean, above the clouds, in your presence. I am free. I hear your whisper through the wind. Now there's no place that I would rather be. So let this moment last. I've searched myself. I've tried to figure out who I am, and you were always there to lift me up. Cause no one else can make me love like you. You give me strength, Lord. I finally know where I belong. I can feel you in the sunlight and through the cold nights when I close my eyes. I am walking alone. Hey, good morning to you, my my friends brothers and sisters in Christ. I've got, I feel I've got exciting news today to share about something that Paul wrote in Galatians, focusing on Galatians 6, and that we reap what we sow. That's my little thing this morning, and I hope you join me. But I think before I start, I'm going to just have a word of prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for this morning. Thank you for this day. Thank you for another day. You've given us a rest that we can come to you on this worship day and just honor you and glorify you. And as we think about what we sow, that we also will reap as a harvest. And Lord, how you had Paul bring this out in Galatians. We thank you for that this morning, and I pray for the many needs that are in the world today. Also for the the comments that so many people had so many things going on in their life. And Lord, I just ask you to cover each one of them, each comment, each view by your blood that you know the best for each one. Be with us, guide us, give us the option of your spirit and your wisdom. Lord, we renounce any evilness, any demonic powers that want to hinder this message this morning. I just pray that you could just be the one to watch over us, that your spirit could go with this message about reaping, what we sow. And Lord, let us just have a word this morning to understand this chapter in Galatians 6 better. For your honor and your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. So, that's that's the exciting news is this morning about I was trying to study what I wanted to talk about today and it just seemed God was showing me Galatians 6. And I'm going to read that. It's just the first part of that. It's just going to be a short devotion here. It's about uh, Paul writing to the Galatians. And in uh, chapter 6, it says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such as one in the spirit of meekness, considering 
thyself, lest that thou should also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burden, so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man thinketh himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. So that's pretty clear. Uh, one to three there. Yeah, I believe if we are spiritual and we want to restore somebody that is in a fault, how do how do you, we do that? How is Paul talking about restoring somebody that's in a fault, somebody that's having an issue in life? Do we how, how do we help them? It says. You that are spiritual, restore such a brother. Are we spiritual to help someone that is maybe in need? And, and whatever that need is, there's so many needs in the world today. So many people that are struggling. Is it in their marriage, in their family, business, just health, overall, so many things. I can't even think about all the things that I've went through that maybe you're facing today, whatever that is. Are you the spiritual person to help somebody that's in need? And that's a challenge for me because I was thinking that sometimes it seems like I need help. I need encouragement for what I've been going through. And so I guess I was just so encouraged that if we sometimes think, in verse 3 it says, if we sometimes think that we're someone, then we're probably nothing. And in Christ, we're everything. Christ wants to use us to help other people that are spiritual, that can help people that are maybe not spiritual or are overtaken by a fault, which that could mean so many things. I'll let you fill in the blanks of maybe somebody you know, somebody that needs encouragement. I'm all one for encouraging us to encourage others because it seems like in 2024, especially in the U.S. election year, there's so much chaos going on, so much hurt, so much things that are taking away from the Word of God, the true Word of God. And His kingdom will stand forever. The earthly kingdom is only temporary, but Christ's kingdom will stand forever. Verse 4, it says, But let every man prove his own work, and then shall have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. I think it's pretty clear what Paul's writing here. And I think it's interesting how he brings this out. <clears throat> Verse 7, it says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whosoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. And that's what we're discussing today or I just communicating. I really like your comments because I want you to know that I'm an encourager. I want to help people. And in order to do that, I love your comments. Uh, in last Sunday, I had so many comments, I was just overwhelmed by the encouragement and the love that I see in the world today. And I guess I grew up in life taking this chapter as a real negative thing because it seemed like I was in more trouble than I was in good. And so all I knew about was I was probably going to have a bad harvest. All the things I was sowing that I was going to have a bad harvest and didn't realize till years later, somebody brought out, for the, it says here, for he that soweth to his flesh shall also flesh reap corruption. But, it says here, th this, is, this is what I like. But, I, I, like the, I like the, I like the buts. 
But he that soweth to the Spirit shall also reap of the Spirit everlasting. That's, that's, that's what we want. But I think sometimes we have to hear this other to make this make sense to us. But it does say that if we reap good, or we, or we let, let, let's just read it again. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Wow. That, that, that's, a, that's a wow moment. That means everlasting. So if, we, if we're sowing good seeds, whatever that is, whatever you want to call that, again, fill in the blanks of what you would call in the Bible a good seed, whatever you sow is it going to a nursing home. You know, my dream always was Friday afternoon or Sunday, whatever, go to a nursing home, sing, play music, encourage. Those things are sowing good seeds. And I believe when we do that, we're going to reap life everlasting. It's going to last forever. And it seems like some of the things that when we're sowing corruption, it's so temporary. Have you ever noticed, in, even in your Christian life, that when we, when we are doing things that maybe aren't honoring God, that it's so temporary. It's not fulfilling. It doesn't encourage doesn't encourage other people, let alone myself. I have to sleep with this person. I have to look in the mirror with this person. And we know that's, I believe, why God gave us a conscience in our lives. We know that if we're right with God or if we're not. I think the Lord gave us that. So let's be encouraged today as we think about sowing and reaping. Verse 10 here it says, We have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are in the household of faith. I think that means Christians or people that we can communicate with. And there's people that Again, last Sunday talked about choices uh, of the talents. If you want to go back and, and listen to that from last Sunday about my topic on talents. And I think this kind of blends in with that is how are we using those talents and how are we using this reaping and sowing? There's many people in the world today that would love to be able to encourage and to do something for Christ. And I think we can get a lot here in Galatians on that. Again, let's remember about what we sow, what we do. There'll be results. I read in the commentary, it said, you know, we don't plant corn and expect pumpkins or some other, or wheat to grow, we expect it to be corn. Like in Ohio, I have a farm, and this year we planted corn. In Kenya, they would call it maize. I just fully expected corn to come, so when it started coming, I looked, and sure enough, the little corn seed sprouted. The rains came, the sun came, and it sprouted, and it was a little corn stalk, corn stem. It wasn't something else. So don't we, I think what this is saying, when we sow evil, when we do things that are evil or not align with God, then we're going to expect that. I remember years ago, 
I had a brother here in Kenya that had left his wife and was living with another wife. And during the night, and I'd, he'd go back during the day and with his wife, and he was telling me that he had so much Chandrok Manyang, that means in Luo, he had so much problems, so much trouble. And I look at him and think that, how could you live a double standard life and expect to not have problems? And, you know, years later, I came back and he told me how he got right with God, got right with the church, and of course got right with his wife. And he said, things are just so nice. He's so peaceful. Things are so awesome. That's what I'm talking about. That do we, do we sow those seeds and expect a different harvest? I lived that life. I, I'm, I'm old enough and I've been down the road of looking like the right person. And still today, I struggle sometimes with being that person. I'm not perfect. I struggle with sowing the right seed. I sometimes think that I can do something that's maybe not aligned with God and expect everything to be fine. My family is okay. My children are okay. My grandchildren are okay. But then I'm not really aligned with God and I remember some years back, I was traveling back from out of state and in my car, and I turned the radio on to a gospel station. And I, there, there's a preacher come on there, and there was some singing. It was late, and I needed to stay awake, and I was listening to this music and listening to this preacher came on. And, and I, there's one thing I remember, what he said. And I remember he said that in everything we do and say, it should glorify God. There's a scripture for that. And, you know, I was thinking, do I, as I'm driving down the road, do I, as I'm thinking about the sowing and reaping, do I give God glory for everything I do? And you know what? I wasn't. I think sometimes we want to serve our flesh. We want to live for ourselves. It's so much our nature. But that night, I remember I got my phone and I was driving and I called the radio station. I told them who I was and where I was going and, and how I was so encouraged by that message. And they sent me a... a um, the, the message, and I forget, I, on MP3 player or something, and how I listened to that message over and over about everything we do to give God glory. And as we think about this week, this day, next month, to give God glory for everything. I was, I was so smitten that I, I don't really do that. In everyday living, day by day, trying to give God the glory. He wants it. He's a jealous God. He wants all of us. He doesn't want us on Sundays only or on Wednesday night Bible study. He wants us all the time. And I think our heart should be that. And as we grow in Christ, some of you... I was so encouraged that on the comments that you don't maybe, you've, you don't read the Word of God or you lay the Bible down or it's getting dusty and it didn't just encourage you to go back into the Word. I'm not saying to follow some man, but just seek God wherever you are today in your own little place. Just look to God and he'll hear your cry. He'll answer. Maybe not the way you think, but the way he thinks. So I just want to thank you for listening to this. I am so encouraged 
by this this morning to, to take me through the day. And I think in this life that we're living, we really need to seek out God. If we expect to go see him and meet him, Jesus in person, the one that saved us, the one that cleansed us, the one that gave us salvation, to actually meet him. And that's going to happen. We will do that. That's exciting. I think that should excite us to wherever we are, wherever your marriage is, wherever your family is, however your business is going, and your retirement. But just, just to talk to God and to seek Him and to remember what we will sow that we also will reap. I'm getting ready to reap corn, maize in the U.S. And what are we going to reap spiritually? That's, the, that's really the question this morning. So thank you for listening. Thank you for being with me on this journey. Uh, I know we have YouTube things about life in general, and it's been so many requests for encouragement on Sunday, so I'm trying to do that. And you know what? It, it really, I told my wife, Becky, that it, it really is good for me to just to be in the Word and to try to encourage it draws me closer. So maybe, again, if it's not for you, maybe this was just for me today. And I'm willing to, to know that. I know I have to surrender my heart and life every time I get in the Word of God because it's uh, amazing what God can do for us people. And it's still hope. He still hasn't returned for us. If you're watching this today, you're still alive and you're still well. And God loves you. He made you. I've got a video coming out uh, that's about a, a homeless person here in Kenya. And God also made him. God made you and he loves you. So God bless you on your day. Thank you very much. I'm just going to close with a prayer. Thank you, Jesus, again for this message. Thank you for this thought of actually if we sow goodness, we're going to reap goodness and their life everlasting. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for those words that we can hold true in this unshakable kingdom of God and the world around us, all the chaos that's going on, but we can rest in you and know that you love us, you'll take care of us, and you'll be with us. I pray for each listener today. I pray that wherever they are, whatever they're getting themselves into, that, Lord, you would watch over them, that you would protect them, you would cover us by your blood. And, Lord, that this is not just a, something that we're playing with, but we love you, Lord, and we want you to get the honor and the glory for everything. We do and say in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much for listening. Hope you enjoy it. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think about sowing and reaping. God bless you. See